The BV-155B1 is one of the new vehicles for the Summer 2022 Field Testing Battle Pass in War Thunder. Let's check it out. By late 1942, word had reached the German High Command about a new American super bomber that was in development and would eventually become the B-29. To counter this new threat, work began on several projects for high-altitude interceptors that could combine ceiling height with enough firepower to bring down a large bomber. The BV-155 was originally a Messerschmitt project, but it was reassigned to Blum & Voss to better distribute aircraft design resources. Now, it originally had some lineage back to the BF-109, but once the project was reassigned, Blum & Voss reworked the majority of the aircraft, and they actually ended up reusing design elements of several unrelated planes. The first prototypes didn't fly until 1944, and there were serious problems with the engine cooling systems that required some heavy redesign work and delayed the project significantly. The radiators ended up being moved to a new position, the intakes were enlarged, and the fuselage's midsection had to be redesigned a bit to account for the shifted center of gravity. The new version, which resolved most of the original problems, first flew in February of 1945, the performance was less than anticipated, and the project shifted again to use a new engine, but the war was all but lost by the time construction began on the third version of the plane, and primary sources conflict a bit about whether or not the final prototype was actually completed. But the German war effort had already collapsed by this point, and even if it had met all the expectations, there weren't any resources for a normal production run, and the work was abandoned. What we get in War Thunder is the BV-155B1, which seems to represent the second version of the aircraft. This is a premium interceptor in rank 3 of the German air tree at battle rating 3.7. The main armament consists of a 30mm MK-108 cannon and two 20mm MG-151 cannons giving a combined burst mass of almost 6 kilograms per second. Both guns get some really strong ammo belts, and my personal preference is the Air Targets belt for the MG-151 and the Night belt for the MK-108. Both of these ammo belts have the excellent Minengeschoss rounds and pack enormous firepower. The 20mm cannons are mounted in the wings just outboard of the propeller, while the 30mm is on the center line. Overall, the guns aren't too difficult to aim after a few missions to get the feel for them, and you can probably use a longer convergence angle than normal if you use gun convergence. Just be aware that the guns do have different ballistics properties. The flight performance of the BV-155 is actually kind of surprising. The plane is intended as a high-altitude interceptor, but the real flaw with this is that the rate of climb is pretty terrible. I had honestly expected much better climb performance, and even with the interceptor air spawn, runway fighters can sometimes beat you to altitude. The good news is that once you climb up, the rate seems to get a little better and the engine performance opens up a bit, giving you reasonably good airspeed. For this BR range, anyway. Now, given that the plane has a pretty elaborate cooling system, managing the engine temperature isn't too difficult, and you can make pretty generous use of WEP. Now, the turning performance was the real eyebrow raiser. It's actually got a pretty solid level of maneuverability. Now, don't get the wrong idea here. Spitfires and stuff are still going to ruin your day, but the BV-155 feels... Somewhere between a single-engine dogfighter and a two-engine plane like a Mosquito. It rolls pretty slowly, which is to be expected given the wing design, but pulling on the vertical axis is much better than I thought it was going to be. This isn't a stunt plane, but it's more agile than most other prop interceptors. The dive performance is reasonably good, and I didn't run into any wing rip problems, though in fairness I was reasonably careful about managing the throttle. 
No air brakes, but the plane has reasonably effective combat flaps. Now, a noteworthy tidbit is that the fuel load has a really heavy impact on the overall performance. And really, it impacts things more than it does with similar planes, so don't go out with the full tanks. The last thing to remember is that, as always, the flight performance is noticeably more forgiving in arcade battles, and in general, the plane is a lot more aerobatic than it is in realistic battles. Taking the BV-155 into air missions starts with the interceptor spawn, and in general, you're usually going to want to side climb a bit at the start of the match. The heavy firepower combined with the good high altitude performance makes this a natural interceptor to go up and take out heavy bombers. Go figure. But the problem is, since the rate of climb is so comparatively crappy, you won't get up to the bombers if you climb straight forward. And even in a side climb, you may find yourself with a P-38 coming at you before you get to the bombers. Now, the firepower is concentrated pretty close to the center line, so the guns are easy to aim once you get a little practice. And it only took me about four or five matches before I had the ballistics mostly figured out. Now, if you find there aren't any bombers, or faster planes beat you to them, the BV-155 does pretty well with boom and zoom tactics, so you can do the whole vulture thing. Or, if you're feeling gutsy, you can take this in as a more traditional fighter. That works better in arcade battles than in realistic, but if you manage your speed and you can avoid getting two on one, you can still win dogfights with a little bit of careful flying. Now, if something like a Spitfire gets within about one kilometer of you, you're basically screwed. But most planes at this BR are closer to a fair fight with a little skill or a little luck. The Minengeschoss ammo in the cannons means that you usually won't need too many hits to bring things down. And on that topic, the BV-155 ends up being surprisingly tough and it can sometimes absorb an enormous amount of damage before burning out or breaking apart. Visually, this is a pretty weird looking plane with those huge mid-wing radiator assemblies and the super wide wingspan with a wing shape that looks a bit more like it comes from a glider than a fighter. It's got some external piping for the cooling system out along the edges of the fuselage and generally, I kind of like planes like this that have that unconventional look of desperation, like it's some experimental prototype rushed into an emergency scramble, barely held together by bolts and hope. No custom paint jobs or anything, but the camo pattern it gets isn't too bad. The landing performance is great. The huge wingspan gives a pretty floaty landing approach, especially with the flaps down, and managing the throttle and airspeed on landing is actually pretty easy. The throttle's very responsive. Even better, you can lock the brakes up right after setting down, and the plane isn't going to nose over, which is unusual for a single-engine tail dragger. The cockpit, on the other hand, is not great. The bracing is very thick and seriously gets in the way. The plane has a good raised cockpit, which in theory should give great all-around visibility, but it's an early pressurized cockpit and has lots of extra bracing to support sealing up, which unfortunately obstructs the view pretty badly. I didn't like flying this in VR. To close out on the Blommen Voss BV-155B1. This plane has good high-altitude performance, gets the interceptor spawn in realistic battles, has an enormous amount of firepower from its forward cannons. It's more maneuverable than most people would expect from a plane like this, and it gets premium bonuses. However, its low-level performance is much more average. The climb performance kinda sucks for an interceptor. It doesn't roll well, and it doesn't have any external weapons. The final verdict on the BV-155 is that this plane is an excellent high-altitude interceptor, but sometimes it might feel like you wasted your time climbing if you can't find any bombers to attack, since its low-level performance is a lot less impressive. Still, it's really fun to fly, so if you want a low-tier German premium, 
get working on that battle pass. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you.